Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to show off a new watch I actually just got. This is the G-Shock Golf Master, the GWN 1000. This is a triple sensor watch, similar to my other ones that I have here as well. And you know, this is actually the first time I've ever gotten a uh, analog. Uh, G-Shock. I've kind of avoided them just because I've always figured that the digital are just going to be more robust, which I'm still obviously I think they are more robust, less moving parts. Uh, they're going to get ba better battery life because you don't have to move any mechanical pieces. So just kind of stayed clear of the digital ones. But had a, uh, if you notice, I got rid of my uh, PRW30, the smaller Pro Truck, and actually traded for this one. So I figured why not um, when I give it a shot and I actually like it more than I thought um, you know it's it's a pretty cool watch uh, it's definitely a very hefty watch when you compare it to these other ones um, this definitely is a heavy watch but I actually do like the analog more than I thought I would so just going to go through maybe a couple dimensions with this watch and then ultimately I think what I would like to do is Put on a sapphire crystal. So this is a mineral glass. Um, I would love to get a, uh, a blue AR coated sapphire. So I'm actually going to be taking this apart and I'm going to try to remove the crystal and measure it so I can kind of see what the dimensions are because I haven't had any luck finding it on the internet to get an idea of what the dimensions are. So I might have just to measure it. But well, let me just kind of quickly show you guys kind of how it compares to some of the more. Uh, common G-Shocks and Pro Trucks. So let's take the well-known Range Man. So you can kind of see from a size perspective, this one does look bigger, but we're gonna measure here in a second. It's definitely heavier, but let's go ahead and do a couple of uh, weights here and take a look to see how they compare from a weight perspective. So let's change this to grams. Okay, zero it out. Okay, so Range Man first comes in at 92. Pro Trek, 92. The other Range Man, 87. And that's because I've got different kind of straps on here. And now the Golf Master comes in at 101 and let me just for fun let's see what the Garmin Phoenix 7 comes in at 73 so weight wise obviously it is much heavier let me do a quick wrist shot for you as well to kind of give you an idea what this looks like so I've got about a you know close to a 7 inch wrist maybe just a little bit under but here's kind of what it looks like on a 7 inch wrist I think it wears actually very comfortably. You know, I'm a lefty, so I wear my watch on my right hand, and I typically kind of have a challenge with these sensors kind of digging in a little bit. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, but not too bad. I mean, I feel it a little bit, but for the most part, you know, it's a very wearable watch, but it is heavy, and you feel it on your wrist. On your wrist. But, you know, I am kind of liking the analog a little more than I thought. I think it kind of makes the watch a little bit more, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, uh, maybe less tool-like. Um, I think digital is very kind of tool-oriented. This kind of gives it a little bit more of a kind of wearability, but I don't know, maybe just new, but I am liking it. Uh, from a size perspective, okay, now let's do kind of some uh, side-to-side -side comparisons for uh, the size between the range man and the golf master. So if we go from the thickest point, which is kind of the edge of the, edge of the shrouds, we're at 56.2. And on this one, we're at 54.2. So a little bit smaller there. If we go button to button, 40, let's see about 49.8 to so 50. Okay, one and a half um, 
It's a little bigger there. And if we go kind of bezel, 40, 40, no, 43, 44, you can call it 44. Better shot here. Yeah, about 44. 44.4 for the bezel. And if we kind of look at the bezel for this one, about 46 of this bezel. I mean, it doesn't really have a bezel, but thickness, um, you know, at its thickest point, the arrangement is 17, and its thinnest point is 16.4. This one is gonna be 16.2. So this is actually a little bit thinner uh, by a hair, but that kind of gives you an idea, a little bit of dimension. So they're, you know, pretty close, I would say, to be honest. Um, this one does kind of feel a little bit smaller, uh, just because it's lighter, but you know, if you can wear the Rangeman, you can wear the Golf Master. Um, what else can I tell you here? So obviously the big difference with the Golf Master also is the operation. It incorporates this kind of, uh, crown which I don't know to be honest kind of overcomplicates it you know I wish they kind of just stuck with the same you know button controls here but uh, I, I think it'd be an analog if I needed it's a little bit more extra controls but that's pretty much it the strap on this thing is really nice it's actually a very kind of soft warm feeling kind of strap uh, this one feels very kind of plasticky this one does feel a little bit more kind of rubbery uh, so it does feel a little bit nicer. Uh, but now, I think that's kind of it for comparison. Um, you know, there's other videos out there you guys can look to kind of go way more detail on the specs. I just kind of wanted to show and compare it against the, the Range Man, really. Um, but what I want to do now is maybe uh, take it apart and see if I can get that crystal measured so I can try to source a sapphire and replace it. So let me get some of my tools out and we're going to take this uh, guy apart. Right. <clears throat> Let's jump into it. Taking these off first, and then I'll take the straps off here in a second, too. I'm gonna change bits to get those. And my tweezers. Thank you. 
Okay. Now we can get the back cover off. And we gotta get the module out. First, have to disconnect the sensor. I'm trying to look to see how to best do it. Okay. Sensor disconnected, and now we can remove the module. Let me see where to start. prefer to go opposite of the sensor so let me just start from this side Forgot that we're dealing with a. Forgot that we're dealing with a analog. I got. I got to take the. The pin out. Almost forgot. This is the first time I actually have used one of these. So. So we got to take this pin out. So used to working on uh, digital ones that I for totally forgot about this one. It looks like it comes off the same way that uh, that most analog watches come off. There we go. Okay. So now we can remove the module. So just put it in a safe place. Don't disrupt the hands. And we've got this now. So now let me just see. The only thing. All right. So the only thing I'm looking for, and I think we're okay on this one, is where is the solar? Because on some of these watches, like this Protrek, for example the solar is kind of right kind of integrated with the crystal I think same with uh, this one as well but it appears that there is no solar integration here it's all here and the way one way you can tell is there's no springs so they would you they would on those other watches you have springs that like would stick out somewhere around here to make contact with the solar so I think it's fair to say that the whole solar apparatus is contained there which means we should be good with this so now let me just kind of look around to see how this is all put together just gonna try and get a visual here See how much I have to 
Let's assemble to get to the crystal. Shroud's gonna have to come off, but let's see how. Unless it's just glued on. Okay, so I finally figured out how to do it. I just kind of got my pry bar that I use for like removing bezels off normal watches, and it's kind of the same thing. I think it's just like either glued on or just on tight, but once you kind of get in there and start kind of wiggling it, it starts to come off so I just started doing it right now and it's slowly coming off so put the camera back on actually I think you know what I think it's just glued on because I can feel the glue kind of giving out but there we go is it glued on or is it just compression oh, I think it's just compression oh it's just it's just a compression fit there we go so it was just on there pretty tight Oh no, it was glued on. There's a, little, there's a little tape right there. But now we can see the crystal. It looks pretty thin, but let's measure it. This looks like it's about a... 35.4 I would say I guess I could pop it out now and just see How it's held in place. I don't know if it's glued in there too, because I don't see a lot of um, like like pressure fit. Like most analog watches are just there's a gasket and it's kind of just basically held in with pressure. I don't know if this is glued in or something. No guts, no glory. So let's just go ahead and uh, pop the crystal out. Okay, we've got everything in place. Let's see what happens. And that was very easy. Okay, so it is gasket fit. It is gasket fit, so that's good. All right. So now we've got the crystal out and we can get all the dimensions now. So let's take a look here. So we've got two and a half thick, 35 and a half across. So there we go. I am going to see if I can find a sapphire crystal and be back with an update.